Hello everyone, this is Adam from infotainment.com. Today we're going to be looking at a Uconnect 5 system inside of a Ram 1500 TRX. Now one of the biggest differences between a Uconnect 5 and a Uconnect 4 is that Uconnect 5 allows you to have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Currently I'm connected to Android Auto and I have no wires connected to my phone. Now let's get into the actual Uconnect 5 system. When you first boot up the Uconnect 5 in your truck, it's usually going to default to these two widgets right here, which are the navigation widget, the built-in navigation widget, I should say, and the now playing widget. Now, of course, you can change these widgets at any time. There's quite a lot of options we can use here. We can again go back to now playing. We can choose our phone favorites, our phone recents, our shortcuts, which gets really interesting. And then we can choose our seats, and we can even remove the widget entirely. However, since this is the home screen, it's just gonna say add widget, so there's not much point to it. Now, we can expand the nav widget here, but it's just gonna take us to the nav screen anyway. So, you might as well add something here while you're here. All right, I've changed it back to the now playing, and of course, we can also move these around. So that can be on top, this can be on the bottom, and not only that, we can add pages with our own widgets. So let's do layout two. So now we have a lot of things that we can do here. So we can have our timers, we can have our climate controls again, we can have our phone recents. Of course, if you really wanted to get crazy with this, you'd go to layout four and then you choose shortcuts. Now you have a lot of options now. So we have controls here, which usually just has to do with camera controls. We can go to make a call here, and not only can we make a call just from here, we can also save the number as a shortcut. So we can just press a button and call somebody with this. We can also add any of the in-car apps to this, like the weather, or the controls, or the Android Auto itself, the phone, Alexa, performance, and you have a lot of options here. Now, unfortunately, you can't go too crazy, because if you do shortcuts on the second one down there, it's just going to switch the shortcuts to down here. So you can't have an entire page of shortcuts, unfortunately. Going back to the main screen here, we have this header up here which gives us even more options and shortcuts, like these two are our climate controls for both of the seats. We have our clock, we have our weather, and we have our driver profiles. So all the settings that I'm going to do are going to apply to driver one, and it will not apply to driver two. And another cool thing about profiles is you can save your seat settings. All right, now let's go to the media tab. Now here we have the usual suspects. We have our sources, like FM radio, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, AM radio, and of course our Android Auto, which it's playing off of currently. Now you also have options for Amazon Alexa, an auxiliary cable, and even a USB stick if you're feeling 2010. And of course we have all the audio settings here we have the surround sound. We have the audio settings tab, which just has the balance and fade options here. And we also have autoplay for USB devices and the radio when the vehicle turns on. And we have the aux volume offset if you have an auxiliary cable and you're playing something off of an auxiliary cable. All right, now let's go to the comfort settings. Now the comfort settings is just your climate controls and we have the fan options down here in case you want to manually choose the speed. If not, just press auto. Now a cool thing we can do is there's a dedicated button to turning on all of the AC options all at once by pressing max AC. It turns your car into a frigid air. 
All right, and that was the comfort tab, and that was pretty self-explanatory. Now let's go to the nav tab. Now the nav tab gives us this huge screen to work with and play around with, and we can pinch and we can squeeze, and it's just a really nice GPS system here. Let's go check out some of the options here. Now let's go to the show settings. Now here in the show settings we have traffic flow which just shows the real-time traffic updates. We also have the arrival time and distance. We have a sidebar that we can show. We can have the range of the vehicle being shown at all times. And we can have points of interest. Now and even hospitals if we need them. Let's go to map view. We can also change the map orientation from it being a 3D map to a 2D map or a 2D north up map that will always display north upwards. Now let's go into routing. Now I have not gone into Android Auto just yet, but I'm going to say this right now. The routing, when it comes to avoiding things, has a bit more options than the Google Maps does on your phone. So in addition to ferries and toll roads, we can also avoid unpaved roads, carpool lanes, interstate highways, and tunnels. Let's go back here. And we have the sounds and alerts. And these are all the options that you have for what kind of warnings and sounds that you want. All right, I think that's enough of the... Now, of course, Android Auto, we have the Google Maps up here. We also have our Spotify, our phone, our messages, and we have a lot more apps that we can choose from here. So if you prefer to use Google Maps instead of the navigation, then this is where you'd find it. Because if I try to remove the widget here, it just says add widget and we can't really do much about this. So if you want full screen navigation, you'll be using the built-in navigation system. All right, now let's go to vehicle. Here we have camera. So we have our vehicle cameras, which we can view at any time. There's our surround camera. Then we also have our trailer cameras, which we don't have one hooked up right now, so that's not available to us. Now let's go to our dashboard. Now, this is interesting. If you have a Ram 1500 TRX, you're gonna get options like this, like performance pages, your drive modes, and your race options. And they're all very in depth of the car. We have things like timers, gauges, we have the engine and torque, we have the G-forces, we have the vehicle dynamics and the steering angle. We have all of this in the performance pages. We have drive modes, and there's so many drive modes in this. We have the sport, we have towing, we have snow, automatic, custom, mud and sand and rock, and Baja. And then we have race options. So we have the launch controls, we have the shift light, and we also have race cool down. Now, of course, since this is not my vehicle, I'm not gonna touch any of this stuff. Here in controls, we just have the controls for the mirror dimmer, and we also have the controls for the vehicle cameras. Now here in settings is a huge chunk of where all the features lie. We have the display options, so white mode, dark mode, things like that. We have the touchscreen beep, which says it's on, but I haven't heard it at all. Maybe it's because I have my volume all the way down. You can set the navigation to have turn-by-turn -turn instructions displayed in the vehicle's cluster. We 
Let's go to My Profile. Now, My Profile has a lot of redundant settings that you'll usually find in the other settings here. So we're just going to go through these for a little bit, and then we're going to go through these tabs one by one. In My Profile, you can set your theme, you can set your units. Once again, light and dark mode, touchscreen beep, things like that. And we go into the safety and driving assistance. It also detect if emergency vehicles are coming down the road. We have park sense volume, so when you're parking, it'll alert you. You can set it to low, medium, and high. We have the trailer length or blind spot alert. We have that set to auto. We have the hill start assist, and we have the tire fill assist. Here with clock and date. Now, this syncs time with the GPS on my phone, so we can't set the time in here. We can only do it on my phone. Of course, the time format, 24 hours and 12 hours. We'll show time in the status bar, which is right up here. Now let's go to phone and Bluetooth. We have the device manager. We have do not disturb all, so absolutely no pop-ups will happen when you're driving. We have enable two active phones. Phone pop-ups displayed in cluster, we've already been over that. Here we have voice options, so we can set the voice to being either female or male. We can set up a wake-up word, we can have voice barge in, which just means you can keep talking while the system itself is talking. But we do not actually have a trailer connected to our system right now, so we can't really use this. We have our camera controls, which we've already been through. We have mirrors and wipers. We have tilt side mirrors in reverse, so the side mirrors will tilt down in reverse. So if you're trying to park within the lines, it will help you do that. Let's go to lights. We have a lot of options for the lights here. We have headlights with wipers, auto dim high beams, adaptive front lights, daytime running lights, things like that. Let's go to brakes. We have the auto park brake. Whenever we set this into park, it will automatically turn on the parking brake. And brake service is just retracting your park brakes so you can work on your brakes. Now we have doors and locks. We have all these options for your locks. Let's go to seats and comfort. We have easy exit seats, and easy exit seats just means when you turn off the car, the seat will go in reverse so you can get out of the car more easily. We have the key off options. We have the aux switches, which are just settings for the aux switches down here. We have audio settings, which just mostly has to do with the sound of the volume, the surround sound, whether we want it on or off. We have notification settings, so if you get a notification on your phone, it will automatically have a sound. We have the SiriusXM setup, but we don't have SiriusXM set up in this car anyway, so we're not really going to mess with this. We have software updates, which is self-explanatory. And lastly, we have the system information, like the build number and the license information with the built-in HTML viewer right here. Now lastly, we have apps. So really, this is kind of a redundant feature, so it's not really worth getting into right now. Just know that it's there, and usually if you have... All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough of the Uconnect 5 system in the Rand 1500 TRX.